Hello everyone, Pigastus here and welcome to this video commentary on a Plaguefall plus 20 I did earlier as a Beast Mastery Hunter. In this run we will be looking at things that went right and things that perhaps could have gone better and where I and maybe you can improve. Um, so first off, this is a pug run, but I've done one run before this with, with these guys, so uh, it's still, there's no comms and anything, but they are we are familiar in in a sense. Uh, so here on our tank, instead of wanting to pull the incinerator, he first wanted to clear this pack. And I think this run really shows what a good tank does, or at least I think I consider this tank a very good tank. Um, so on the opening pull, we clear this room before we do the incinerator. Uh, and that's because we wanted to uh, have some space with the, the puddles from the inferno. And here we are, just casually DPSing down this one. As you can see, I put down Hunter's Mark on uh, on him to reduce the damage, and also I used Feign Death, so that's a combination of about 16% damage reduction uh, on Incinerator Arclath, which is very nice. And here you can see in the top or top left screen, everyone used their interrupt, and this is this will definitely bite us in the ass at the start of this dungeon. As you can see, we wipe here. And that is very awkward. All right, so here we are back again. Um, this time we all got rest and we take our talents and we keep on going. Um, it's a plus 20 and we wiped in the first part of the dungeon most of the times. That shit really just wipes the group. Uh, we are lucky to uh, at least be able to continue on with the pool. Uh, and as you can see, before we do the first boss, we're gonna keep moving further. And you will see why in a second. Um, this is something I have not seen many tanks do. I think I've only seen one so far. And it really, really helps out. Uh, there I got hit. If this was mob week, or what's it called? Fortified, I think. Uh, then I would have died there. So that was a bit of a scrub move for me, and that's something I definitely should uh, prevent. There, the Plague Barrel she was enraging. I could have used Trank Shot, but the tank beat me to it, and he already dispelled it. On certain priority mobs, it's very good to make sure that you um, use the Trank Shot to remove the enrage effect. Uh, so guys, if you like this content, then consider leaving a like, and if you really like this content, then consider subscribing to the channel, it helps me out a lot. I can see that some of you guys are really, uh, yeah, subscribing, giving me feedback, uh, and it really helps out. I think it's fun, and uh, I can't wait for patch 9.1.5 to create more content for you guys. Um, if you have feedback for me, let me know, and... Um, yeah, I really want to hear uh, what you guys think. Uh, there we just casually threw a Fain Dead in just to reduce damage, but there was not really any damage, so it wasn't really necessary. Uh, but still, if I got hit by something, then I uh, had a higher chance on surviving. Uh, but this is all kind of avoidable damage, so you should. And here we clear this back out uh, just well we can run over I don't know why the tank didn't run over but uh, perhaps he was low on CDs and didn't want to die there so here I usually see that these two wretched plague belches are pulled with the red uh, slime this tank didn't do that on purpose and uh, like here he says it as well, he don't want to kill the red ooze yet. So we need to do single target damage uh, when the red ooze spawns, or not spawns, but the pack uh, comes towards here. And that's also the ooze that if you have a necro lord in your group, who will, who can use their uh, necro covenant ability, and that way um, that mob uh, you, you all gain like, a, a, I think it's a 25% haste increase or something like that. But that's why having a, a necro in this group is, is pretty good. And there's not many 
necros, I think. And here we now run to the first boss room back again. Uh, we are not putting really any dots on it. We don't really want to um, to to kill it yet. So it's important that we keep it interrupted and we run to the first boss room. This takes some time to set up, um, but you will see it really pans out quite nicely. Because our monk, I think, is necro in this group. So he will give us a haste buff. As you can see, now we have 50% haste. You can see it in the bottom left. And now we have a lot more haste. But you can see the tank and the healer are standing in it. And at first I'm not really sure why they are doing that. So, yeah. There's no real reason for me to. And then I stand in it. And as you could see, if you uh, slow it down. If I stand in the red bottle, my haste increases by about 50%. And my brain is lagging at this point. And here I am standing in it and now I have 144% haste. I step out of it and I suddenly have 95% haste. So if my stupid ass would just, just stand in there, the entire time I would have had so much more haste. And the healer is doing it and it gives you a, uh, a dot and, and it ticks for some damage. But the damage is not really that high because the damage is buffed by uh, mob weak. And we're at boss week right now. So that's not really a problem. Uh, and here I should be standing in it. Um, luckily later on in the video. We will see a sort of similar situation. Where uh, I actually do use the buff better. Uh, and more, more make more use of it. So here I stand in it. And now I still have 88% haste. And... Uh, now 50% haste and we're s yeah 88 now and we're still yeah just casually uh, like we have bloodlust on us so that is something that if I was a tank I would most definitely do that was nice um, and now we continue onward into the dungeon uh, because we skipped the first half of the dungeon we will need to do um, more here, uh, but that's fine. This is an area where uh, if your tank is all right, then you can easily do it. Um, and we have a paladin healer as well, which can dispel diseases, I think. So um, that makes it, it uh, easier to, to remove some of the nasty dots that these, these guys get. Uh, as always, by the way, just spread out your dots properly. Make sure that you uh, uh, dot up everything so your barb shot overall damage increases by a lot. Uh, that's quite important. And here, uh, focus the purple slime first. Because the purple slime gives a damage reduction. Uh, there I'm trying to interrupt, but my interrupt is on cooldown and... Yeah, for some reason I always keep trying to interrupt mobs, although I can't. Uh, here I'm waiting with my resonating arrow. Well, I thought I was waiting with my resonating arrow. And I was until my uh, visual red almost came off cooldown. I could have waited two seconds longer and first get my uh, visual red off cooldown and then use my resonating arrow. I should have done that because that way the resonating arrow, the 10 seconds that that mob lasts um, was fully used while under bestial wrath where now so that's what i wanted to say in a lot less words but i didn't my brain just scrammed and it didn't came out properly but we are still managing to do it um, there we just walk over one and here the tank says stay and i've never some, seen a tank do this but i really love it and why? Because the mob or a scold heart is coming down. And normally you are always just standing there on top and either you are getting line of sighted or uh, if you're not careful you might pull like a tentacle or so. And here it's you have all the space in the world 
and it's fairly easy. What I should have done earlier and what I'm not doing is using my Hunter's Mark on Oros to reduce his damage. Uh, I'm slowly getting there, I'm using it more often, but it's still not really in my system. Uh, I prefer to take the regenerative fungus. I don't know if it if that is the the best one, but I prefer to use that one. This this part of the dungeon is always kind of a time loss, I think, because you can't really pull more than this. You can't continue onward. There's no way you can skip this, I think, because Otherwise, you will die of the poison. And there, awkwardly, our uh, monk died. Uh, but we're still, we're still okay. After the first wipe, we had some good pulls, and it went quite smoothly. Uh, here, I use my cooldowns. I could have saved them um, for the next big mob, but the next big mob is still only a mob so its damage is not getting boosted all that much uh, and so I used the full duration of my aspect of the wild on that pull um, and yeah you want to pull, uh, pop out as many of your cooldowns as possible so that's what we did there um, there I put a bleed on the plague binder should not have done that um, and there we remove the enrage of this guy. And what I did not see here was that the tank was already moving along way further. And so I was just standing there casually still killing that guy. And the tank was already on, on this pull. And it was really nice because he managed to get the two plague borers to explode on these guys. So that's nice. And here we move through the middle. Because you, you, you won't pull the side packs if you move through the middle properly. And we will do um, Executioner Veruth first. One of the more ruthless and again, this is something that I don't see other tanks do. Because they just keep on pulling like first the left pack, then the right pack, and then the other right pack, and then go up here. This is way better, and you will see soon uh, as well. So that's, these are the, the kind of things that you see in a plus 20, I think, uh, that I've not seen if I do a plus 19 or a plus 18 or so. Because um, you need to squeeze out as much uh, as you can or make it sure that the, the time is easy. Um, here we go, I think, yeah, with Dagger of Necrotic Wounding. I really, uh, I like that on boss week because uh, it deals quite a lot of damage. And we have a, a nice little damage breakdown at the end of the video as well. So if you guys like it, then consider leaving a like. And if you really like it, then uh, subscribe to the channel. Also, I made a guide on uh, which stats, talents, and all that kind of nice shenanigans. If you want to see that, I think you can see it like somewhere here in the screen. We'll pop a video over there. And besides, if you try to click on it, it won't work because I integrated it into the video because I have no uh, fucking clue on how to put a video uh, which you can click on YouTube uh, yet. So, sorry, you still have to find it. If you just type big doses and then stats or something, I think you will, will be fine. And here, uh, as you can see, we do this pack last. And this is again, because if you look closely, there is a red mob in between this pack. The same red ooze that was on the first boss, the one that gives us haste. And so we're gonna tank, or the, bo uh, the tank is gonna tank the boss in this area first. And why? Because we want the extra haste. Uh, so we're gonna... Uh, bloodlust the first or the second yeah the first jump so at the start we're gonna tank him here 
and then we're gonna move on to the next island and there we go and do bloodlust and that's because like as you can see the tank really wants him here and that's because he knows that if you now stand into the red bottle you gain a nice haste buff so we got the necrolord one uh, from the uh, from the monk but we are also now standing in this haste buff so we got 108% haste which gives us a nice very nice burst in this window as you can see I'm already popping about 12k DPS and that is without using aspect of the wild because I want to use that on the next island uh, with bloodlust so I chose not to use it here because we come here and we want to continue on our nice little damaging spree and so I pop it here and what I should have done what I'm not doing properly is I should have put the barb shot on the purple slime instead of on Dr. Ickes because Dr. Ickes is taking about 90% less damage or so when the purple slime stands next to it so I should have um, dotted up the purple slime because that's the one that you want to kill first and here we continue on DPSing and now we still have 50, 65 yeah 65 percent haste because we have bloodlust still running um, and that's yeah that's gone now so th these things as a tank really can help s uh, uh, smoothen your dungeon but if you know that as a he as a DPS then you can say that as well some tanks don't really like to hear it though so be careful with that and here we CC the purple slime I did not know that I recently figured that out when, while playing my uh, paladin tank which I'm, I'm gearing up so I can make some content for you guys on that one as well um, that you can use control on that or fear on that or something on that I think it's called and then you fear them up for 45 seconds and it's massive because now we don't have to kill the purple slime but don't do that on like two uh, purple slimes because usually one will show up again and then they like if you are unlucky they both defend their, uh, the other and so you have like a 90% damage reduction and both of them well good luck trying to kill them then so don't do that um, something I don't really get on this pool what what I see other tanks do, which I like as a as a DPS, is when they run into the 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 green shit and pull two of the mobs uh, already on the island, so that the island pool is a bit easier. Because this pool is really not yeah doesn't really do anything, and you can pull the defender of many eyes and the gushing slime. I think you can pull those both of them um, here keep your stun for when the defender of many eyes I think it's called uses his bulwark that way you can stun it and that makes it very easy uh, for the rest of the group and for yourself to keep DPSing so do that uh, here you can see the group really drop low uh, in a couple of seconds and that's because this this island although not all mobs are full health is really hard for some reason so uh, don't underestimate mate that island and even use cooldowns if you can or if you have them on that island as well here I should already use hunter's mark on this guy because that stomp as you could see did so much damage on on the group um, I think he will he will be doing it again soon like seismic wave and there you can see that's quite quite some damage and I can reduce it by um, like quite quite a lot if I feign that and uh, use hunter's mark so I should do that more often in this video and, and looking at this content then it helps also helps me think about what I should do better um, here I love it that uh, the healer is talking to the tank like when when should I use Ashen um, everyone really was looking towards the tank because he really oh, he, he did a great job um, 
as I said in another video of mine, I told you guys not to do anything about the envelope enveloping web as you can see there's like no damage at all here um, and so it's very good to just let that cast go through and don't use your interrupt on it because there's no damage and it's very easy for the rest of the group to, um, to keep keep on going and keep dpsing here i sadly don't have my stun because i used it on the uh, on the ad or yeah on the previous ad uh, to prevent the spy, uh, stealth links from uh, being cast. Uh, um, but someone else uh, could have maybe gotten the shield a little bit quicker. I don't know, maybe some uh, some of the abilities were on cooldown. Uh, to interrupt that as well. If you are a marksman hunter, you can, I think, even use explosive shot. To, uh, to stop that cast. And even though we had our first wipe... At the start of the dungeon, we still have almost 15 minutes left with two bosses to go and not that much count to go as well. So, that is pretty nice. Here you see the stealth links come up. Just use your flare to, to show them for the group. Uh, usually there's someone who uh, also already sees it, but you can throw down your um, flare and use your um, resonating arrow. Like what I'm doing here, I'm still using my cooldowns. I'm think, yeah, I'm I'm keeping bestial wrath here. Not really necessary. I could have used it right away, because by the time that uh, we start the boss, I probably would have gotten back pretty quickly. Anyways, no use all your stacks of barb shot before you use uh, bestial wrath. But if you have high crit, then sometimes you get so many stacks. And, and that's nice, but yeah, still use them because you get like a lot of extra focus, of course. So here, what I like to do is I would l I always like to use my tar trap, no, not tar trap, uh, my flare, I mean, and I like to use my um, ice trap to reveal some of the mobs because it really helps out your tank because the the daggers that they throw it really hurts the group. And so you can really over, uh, reduce the overall damage that the group takes if you do that. Uh, I can see I have Hunter's Mark on this boss. Um, so somewhere I was like, maybe this is going to hurt, so let's fix that. Uh, and here you can see the entire group helps out the tank to, um, uh, to reveal the mobs. And there I didn't want to get the extra damage, and so I just turtled so I could keep on DPSing right after instead of being stunned there. Let's see. And so this fight, yeah, as you can see, it, it takes some time, but there the Brute Assassin was uh, frozen. Please try and, and help your tank out uh, during this phase, because it really, it's really a hard phase. I, I think I tanked this quite a lot on my Paladin, and it's it's a, di a pretty difficult phase. Um, there I walked over to the monk because he flew out to heal or uh, to not uh, damage the group, uh, but you get webbed after a couple of seconds, of course. Uh, so, I uh, I walk over to him to prevent him from being webbed. That's something you can do as well, because we can, of course, DPS on the move, so why not do that? Um, here I usually don't take the effort on multi-dotting all the different mobs, because they die so quickly. So I just keep on uh, Venom Blade here as my primary target. Um, but yeah, I could have done that. I don't know if it really, really helps out. And here we 
continue onwards to the last boss, which is always very, very scary. At least a lot of people find this ball, uh, this boss, very scary. And usually, I think it's it's fine, but sometimes when I'm not really focused, then I just screw up and yeah. Um, I get hit by a tentacle, and if you get hit by a tentacle on this run, uh, on a twenty where the mobs hit harder, well, or the boss hits harder, you're dead. So let's see if I can prevent that in this run. No, we almost got ten minutes left, and as you can see, the tank is just going really fast, kiting around the mobs. Um, and making sure that uh, they are all nicely stacked because the mobs will keep running in circles but pretty much in the center that makes it easier for us to DPS them down uh, it takes some time because our warrior was dead for this fight and had to walk all over but that's fine uh, so guys let me know how was your week this week uh, with and raging and volcanic because this was really an easy week to push uh, I might upload even more plus 20 videos because I managed to do at least three by the time of recording this video I managed to do three plus 20s so that makes me on a um, yeah I've finished four dungeons on plus 20 so I got the nice nice portals to those but I have four left to go um, and this isn't very easy week to, to do that uh, here we get called Bloodlust Phase 2, so we're gonna use Bloodlust uh, in that phase. I always find this very annoying because the stairs really screw up with your line of sight. And here we don't take the uh, red mob towards the boss, and I don't know if that's even possible or if that just costs too much time uh, or that the tank, because he saw that only three people were more or less using it because the warrior and the monk never stood in the purple uh, or the red goop uh, so maybe he found it not necessary I don't know um, if you guys know perhaps they can can't be dragged through this I don't know if you guys know let me know in the comments because uh, I really if, if it is possible and it is maybe even a time gain then if I tank this then I want to do that as well so let me know Uh, here I always wait with resonating arrow or at least I try to wait with resonating arrow until the malignant spawn um, and standing in front of the malignant spawn is always the safe zone in this phase so it's very easy you should never get clapped here uh, it's fairly easy here we have a hunter's mark on the boss already and as you can see, try and multi dot both the boss and the spawn. Uh, I'm not using my aspect there because I want to use that for phase two. Um, and here the tentacle spawn. And I have to use my aspect there because I was not paying attention properly and almost got slapped. Because that's what good players do. <laughs> Don't get slapped. That's dumb. We use Beast or Wrath on this phase, that was not maybe a great idea uh, because we're gonna pump damage now in this phase and so yeah I should have not used Beast or Wrath on those little ads because then I had it up for this moment and now I don't which really reduces the damage I do in this phase. Um, as well you can just multi-shot here uh, to, to make sure that you hit both targets. I was doing a run the other day and there was this beast mastery hunter who just did not use multi-shot for some reason. Don't be that guy. Please use your multi-shot. Um, there I almost got killed because I got aggro of that mob. Uh, Let's be fair, it's, it's pretty hard for the tank to gain aggro on all of those. 
So, yeah. Be careful with that. Here, our cooldowns really don't overlap quite nicely, but I didn't want to wait for like 30 seconds for my uh, Beast or Rat to come off cooldown. Uh, here I turtle, because I thought that I wouldn't make it, and well, as you could see, I wouldn't have made it. The last tentacle would have hit me, so it's good that I turtled there. Uh, I was too slow on starting to run, but yeah. That's the run, guys. Achievement earned Keystone Hero Plaguefall. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. And if you ha liked it, then leave a like. And if you really liked it, then subscribe to the channel. Um, also, now we're going to look at the damage breakdown. Or at least the way that mine looks. Uh, let's see if I show it. I know I'm going to show it up here somewhere. There it is. Um, I think I'm going to click it anyways. Am I? 9.1k overall. And there we have it. I'm just going to pause this video here. Um, as you can see, most damage is coming from Barb Shot, then Beast Cleave. Um, we're running with the um, uh, aspect of the Beast talent. And, and that's how the damage shows, of course. As you can see, Necrotic Wound, uh, we had it only at the last phase of the dungeon. And it still did 460k overall DPS. I think Necrotic Wound, the Dagger of Necrotic Wounding, the talent really is good. So uh, try and use that. But guys, thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.